truck to contain at least 10 other fires, including the Getty and Kincaid blazes. The strong Santa Ana winds posing additional dangers as the threat of even more destruction looms. In Simi Valley, California, I'm Paul Verkamen. And California isn't the only region dealing with devastating wildfires. South of the border in Baja, California, Mexican firefighters are battling quick-moving fires that have left local residents with little time to get to safety. KPBS reporter Max Rivlin nadler traveled to Rosarito to tour a neighborhood now scarred by fire. Araceli Brown is the mayor of Rosarito, once a resort beach town that has, in the past 20 years, exploded into a city of over 70,000 people. We're driving up to Colonia Morelos, a neighborhood that's perched on a hill overlooking the city. On Friday night, Brown had raced to the neighborhood to help residents escape a fast-moving wildfire that had swept through a nearby valley fueled by Santa Ana winds. Never before in the history of Baja California have there been fires like this. Never. Brown says the fires destroyed more than 60 houses in Rosarito. At least three people died. Brown says that following strong rains over the winter, there was far more vegetation in the valleys that was able to burn. La lumbre brincaba. The fire leapt. In other times, the fire ran no more. But this time, the fire jumped and it fell on the roof of the houses and burned down the houses quickly. The communities hardest hit by the fires last weekend were the ones highest up in the hills, where residents were least eager to leave their properties. Many residents don't have official paperwork to show that their homes belong to them and were worried that if they left, they wouldn't be allowed to return. Brown needed to convince them to get out of harm's way. We went to the area to evacuate the people, but the people didn't want to leave. The fire kept advancing. The fire advanced in such a way I had never seen. So fast. In a matter of seconds, it was practically over the houses. We had to take the people out of there. Up in Morelos, the city has set up a station where people whose houses have burned down can register for assistance, get a medical checkup, and get replacement documents like birth certificates that might have been destroyed in the fire. Brown, who has only been in office for a few weeks, is part of the new ruling Morena party in Mexico. She can see that many people in the poor neighborhood aren't going to leave their homes, even if there's nothing left. So her administration is handing out large tents for people to stay in on their properties while they rebuild. A single father of three girls picks up a tent and chats with Araceli. While they wait to rebuild, the four have been sleeping in a tiny room that survived the fire, which destroyed the rest of their home. Across the way, Eusebia Sorpoveda Vega lived in her home with seven other family members. She's lived there for 17 years. Their entire house burned down. There have been fires, but they never came here. Her family only had a few minutes to escape the flames. They didn't have time to take anything with them, so all of their possessions were destroyed. Her family isn't wasting any time to rebuild their home, however. Volunteers have offered food, their labor, and even an oven as they try to recreate what they've lost. Eusebia says she knows that with more winds in the forecast and extremely dry conditions, that they're still at risk. She says they only plan to rebuild just this once. No, no, nothing more. Only one time. Seasonal fires have long been a part of the ecosystem in Baja, California. This isn't the first time that the area around Morelos has burned. In fact, before the neighborhood was called Morelos, it was known as Los Quemados, or the burned. The previous settlement there was destroyed by a wildfire decades ago. Omar Ortiz is the head of the firefighters in Rosarito. It was up to his small department of under 100 firefighters, both full-time and volunteer, to put out rapidly advancing flames in Morelos, which has no running water. The topography is very complicated. The mountains are very steep. It's very difficult for the equipment to get there. It's tough to bring the water up from below. And then it gets muddy, and it's even harder to get the trucks passed. Ortiz says the risk of fire has only increased as people have moved up into the mountains, trying to find cheaper places to live in the prospering city. Situations like this will become more common, and we're going to need more firefighters, more trucks, more hoses, more firefighters in this area. The rebuilding of Morelos has begun. Local businesses have donated their workers and resources, and students have begun clearing out toxic ash from hollowed-out houses.
As the Santa Ana winds begin to pick up again today, northern Baja could once again be in the path of dangerous fires. With cities expanding their footprints further into areas that have a long history of seasonal burning, the question for these neighborhoods is not if the next fire will hit, but when and if they'll be ready or able to get out of the danger in time. In Rosarito, Max Rivlin Adler, KPBS News. And of course, San Diego is also dealing with Santa Ana winds and very low humidity, which poses a major fire.